Hey, uh, good morning. It's uh, Chan Chai again, and uh, we're gonna do another uh, Chan Chai's Dojo episode here. Uh, it's been a while, and uh, right now I'm just uh, I had to take care of a lot of stuff in the morning for uh, for the restaurant. Uh, super early in the morning, and then now I'm kind of stuck in traffic as I go get my kids to take them to school. Anyways, um, so we've had quite a few things. Uh, Cool stuff come along uh, in recent times. Uh, just this past Monday, I actually did do kind of a, a sparring room uh, coaching session where I kind of tried to help uh, some players find uh, areas they can improve. So you can watch that episode that was for Monday, uh, July July 18th. And uh, yeah, um, I helped out uh, Dusty Crawman's uh, Shun, which is a really good Shun. I helped out uh, Blurring's uh, Vanessa, though uh, they're playing so great already. But um, it's just they're just ironing out a lot of stuff, and one of the they're dealing with one of the hard parts with learning Vanessa, which is that Vanessa gets to kind of skip some of the the general VF fundamentals that a lot of other characters have to do, and because of that, it's something that Vanessa eventually has to learn so that she can defeat it. So she kind of has to kind of apply it, but she, but the way she applies it's a little different just because she's a character who has a lot more attack options when she's on defense, if you're playing defensive stance. And then you kind of do the normal stuff when you're playing offensive stance, but at the same time, she's still able to kind of outspeed things. So she's able to actually, she's just able to attack more from disadvantage than other characters. And because of that, um, she's just less likely to use some of the basic option selects, the fuzzy guard and evade canceling that others use. And so this creates a challenge for Vanessa players that when they get to like the, the intermediate to early advanced phase where um, where everybody is already is learning the fuzzy guards and, uh, and are getting better at using evade throw escape guard, and then evade cancels. Uh, then she's kind of playing catch up and figuring out what the hell they're doing and how to beat it. Um, and she kind of goes straight to beating it as opposed to actually doing it herself. Almost every other character in the game uh, kind of just has to do it themselves aside from maybe Leifei. But, you know, Leifei and Vanessa came into VF at the same time on VF4, Vanilla. And they're just kind of, they're kind of built a little different uh, for their design directions. And even though Vanessa's move list has always swapped, every version of VF has like swapped her move list from one stance to the other, uh, that core basic is still the same, that she that she gets to kind of um, opt for a different kind of option select. Like her attacks become her option selects because they become things that she can do when she's at a disadvantage to beat uh, specific things the opponent likes to do. And then at the same time, because attacks beat throw, uh, it's just kind of built in. And so she's got to kind of uh, take take some time to do extra homework on Fuzzy Guard and evade canceling and then figure out what to do there. So I kind of, you know, I kind of uh, guided the, the session towards uh, reteaching those those things. Um, and then there was also uh, Sharky Anderson, who has a really cool go. Uh, they're playing go very good. Um, that said, uh, I, I hope I was able to help them kind of see more of what to work on. But actually, probably the extra advice I'd give to you, Sharky, if you're watching this video, is I would recommend that you, um, I would recommend that you also just play around, like, take this moment now in your development as a time to mess around with more of the move list. Just try to have fun and, you know, be very patient but try to use more of the move list to kind of enjoy it and see, because I, I will just tell you that aside from like goes 1K, which is a weird move, um, almost every other move that he has is very useful. It's got a place somewhere and it takes a lot of playing around and trying it out in real matches uh, to really, to feel that. But you become a much stronger player in Virtua Fighter if you know all your tools. And this is one of those games where the move list is huge, but you really should learn it for your character. Um, you should use it a lot and get good at using a lot of different moves. Yes, there are best moves. Yes, you should focus on using your best options. But 
uh, versatility becomes a huge factor when you're at the intermediate level. And then when you're at the advanced level, then yeah, it's refining the best options. But then there's the level past that where you're gonna go back and you're you're just rotating through a lot of your utility as well. So it just, it comes full circle and VF has this cycle of getting strong at your basic options and then getting strong at, or getting strong at your best options. And then also getting strong at just your character overall and enhancing their their flexibility, their utility, and it, you know just be and being able to handle more situations. Sometimes learning new moves allows you to un, to unlock uh, improvements in your range play, uh, what people would like to call the neutral. Um, sometimes it just gives you better. It gives you interesting choices, even in in, in the nitaku but it takes a lot of tinkering to do that. Um, and so I recommend just taking a little time, maybe a week, uh, to kind of just let yourself have fun and try different moves and see if you can get a little more creative with your go. And I think that's going to uh, help you appreciate better uh, the strong stuff you do have. And just kind of, I think it's gonna give you some more insight. So I, it's just a big tip that I recommend. That is a big ask. If you really don't like doing it, that's okay, you don't have to but I do think it would benefit you more than that. And so it is my recommendation, but it's just simply advice. Um, okay, so let's get back to Chan Chai's Dojo. I think there was some insight for everyone in what I just said, but the main topic today um, is going to be about, you know, like um, in on the Twitter VF group chat that we have, um, which originally was the Colorado VF group chat, but it just blew up to include a lot of people. Um, We've been talking about autopilot a little bit, and then Tricky made a video on autopilot, and I'm just gonna take a different take, not on the same exact, but just uh, a different conception of autopilot. Uh, but Tricky's video is really good. I highly recommend it. I'll link it, I'll link it. But uh, they also give a really beautiful view of, uh, of New York City through, uh, through their bike camera. And, um, and in that video, Tricky talks about kind of, um, you know, ask the question, is autopilot really so bad? But also kind of their their focus and, you know, like what, what Tricky likes to talk about is mindful play, and that's really important. Mindful play is, uh, is really huge um, in general. And mindfulness as a, is just a good thing to practice in everyday life, in everyday activities, and in everything you do. However, um, what I'm talking about is a little different um, and yet related. Um, I am talking about mindfulness, but I'm also talking about autopilot as in um, kind of like uh, your, if you're doing boxing, it's kind of like the stuff that you train to do when you do mid practice. You know, it's kind of the shadow boxing that you kind of do or what you build. Uh, your basic one twos, weave and hook, um, you know, if you're doing Taekwondo, it's kind of like learning uh, certain set patterns in your play um, and including like just, uh, you know, getting sharp at situations when your round kick is really good. Um, you know, I know people like to dog on uh, Taekwondo in a mixed martial arts co context, but Taekwondo as a pure striking sport is really fascinating to watch and, um, and the speed that Taekwondo <laughs> Uh, fighters have and even the power that they have in their kicks is pretty impressive and the way that they're able to just they're they're able to move like footsies and 2d fighters and at the same time they can retreat and do a round kick that's incredibly powerful to like your side or your hip or your thigh like or even to your knee in a very damaging way um, without you being able to do much about it and so that is uh, you know but that's one of their core basics that they keep training so why do I bring up stuff like the one twos, the weave and hook, shadow boxing, mitt training, and taekwondo kicking? Um, because because these are there are a lot of set things you should do where you basic things that are almost always safe and strong to do, but like in your game they should almost be automatic. They should be kind of like. Um, in some of your gears, they should they should be happening, firing off in almost all gears of play, um, and that's gears as in like bicycle gears when you're in 
uh, low gear, when you're in uh, medium gear, when you're in high gear, you know. Um, and we're going to talk about that in a, diff in a slightly adjusted context for Virtua Fighter and fighting games in general. But, um, but you know, when I'm, when I'm fighting opponents, there are different levels. Basically, um, you know, when you're initially reading, you want to do some real basic pattern stuff because it's going to fish out information for you and it's going to be the plays for you that are just the most safe to do. And so it's just easier to develop reads when you're playing that way. And that kind of play can almost be an auto, uh, like an autopilot. And autopilot isn't a fully terrible thing. Um, in real life, autopilot, what it really is, is just a series of assisting tools that like a pilot has in flight to make sure that they're flying correctly. Um, and it just is adjusted different levels for different parts of the flight. Um, you know, we still have pilot and co-pilot, and it's still important what they do, but their job has become more manageable, more um, and more successful and safer by use of autopilot um, because uh, autopilot systems are there all the assist tools they have are there and everything and their training is absolutely a must and they need to do everything but there's just a context where they can put it okay in your fights that's as you become if you eventually move up from intermediate to advanced level there's going to be some auto le autopilot level stuff in your play you know, in Street Fighter 2, your footsie is almost a sort of autopilot. There's kind of, it's, your focus is placed on a very narrow area, but your your mindfulness activity is playing usually in a way that makes it really hard for your opponent to do anything that's outside the realm of predictable, predictability. And so you're able, there's a, a decent level of control. And so then, like, maybe in like Street Fighter 3 or in some of the Street Fighter games like crouching mid kick is going to be kind of that poke tool where uh, because to move forward and back usually requires standing up then a crouching mid kick might hit uh, because the opponent's not crouch blocking in that moment and if they're not crouch blocking if, it, if you have to catch them then you need to kind of hit confirm the, the crouching mid kick um, in Virtua Fighter it's pretty simple you want to use like High jab is a very strong weapon to use in neutral, and elbow is the is the follow up usually. Elbow is also good in general just because it's a safe mid. But a common pattern that I showed on Monday is high jab, because anytime the high jab contacts the opponent, even if they block it, usually I can do an elbow. Now, if I'm fighting against a character, the four characters that have faster jabs in Final Showdown. It's a little different than like they could technically jab me back so sometimes the pattern becomes high jab low jab but you should really you should let them prove to you that they're gonna do that before you even move off of elbow you should still just use elbow you should still do jab elbow but if they actually jab you out of the elbow then you know and you can switch it to jab low punch um, and that's if you're fighting uh, Pai, Kage, Leon, or Eileen those four characters everyone else jab elbow if your jab makes contact with your opponent, you get to elbow for free. And there's very, very, very little they can do about it. Some characters have very special things, uh, but once they do about it, then you can deal with that. But that jab elbow, pretty consistent thing you can just do and of low consequence unless you keep running into whatever their counter for it is. Um, so again, um, VF has its own mid training. That is practicing the fuzzy guard. So after the jab elbow, let's say they block the elbow. So I showed the pattern on Monday, jab, elbow, it gets blocked, fuzzy guard. And you know what, even if you mess it up, even if you hit with the elbow, which is only zero frame advantage, um, doing the crouch dash for the fuzzy guard isn't a bad thing. Yes, you will not, you, you know, like they might throw you after you crouch, but you st but the thing is is about fuzzy guard in this game is it's really a crouch dash into a standing guard and it could very well if you start to see things if you start to see things in action uh the crouch dash into um you can turn that into crouch dash into attack so anyways i am going to uh edit this video because i'm getting a phone call right now so i will um resume in just a little bit 
All right, um, we're resuming the episode, uh, part two or part B of uh, of uh, Chan Chai's dojo. Um, focus. We're talking about um, kind of autopilot, uh, and really, we're also going to be talking about switching gears. Right? So, part of what I was saying about autopilot was basically, you know, it is very similar to like mid training in boxing. It's, uh, it's a lot like focus drills in various sports and activities. You know, these are kind of like, um, you wanna get very, very strong at a lot of set plays. And I'll just kind of, you wanna be able to get it to a level where you're doing certain things reflexively, certain strong options, or uh, the ability to mix up those options on a reflex level instead of, uh, instead of a very heavy, conscious conscience level where you just um, where it's requiring more focus because it's an activity you're learning instead you want it to be an activity that you've kind of learned to the point of understanding it doing it really well and then unlearn to where it becomes more of a reflex and an option with all the understanding packed into the muscle memory but without uh, without the heavy focus load of, um, of learning it as you did learn it before. You want to fine tune your options and you want to make sure they're the good ones. So it becomes really important. I mean, that's basically what uh, focus mitt training is in boxing, is basically reacting to certain patterns that you see, making sure you're getting the one twos when the opportunity is there. And then also um, just knowing that those options are really safe. And then also being able to mix it up at certain points without such a heavy focus load, cognitive load either. Um, when, you've get, when you get enough of these under your belt and it's comprehensive enough in the game, in the matches, then this ends up becoming an almost uh, a, a mode where it's kind of autopilot, but it's better to think, instead of using autopilot, which could be a loaded uh, term, could be a very... Uh, People can be attaching a little, a lot of judgment on autopilot, right? Because a lot of times autopilot is used as some kind of a criticism of somebody that's just not thinking when they're playing. Uh, you are still very cognitive, but instead it might be that you're using uh, powerful set plays and now you're, you're using your focus for reaction, for speed, for reflex. Um, but it is a focus in a direction and that's where and you know later on this gets back into um, into uh, st into mental stack right about managing mental stack but we're not talking about mental stack today but mental stack is kind of that uh, understanding that dynamic of where the focus is placed and where and what ends up what it ends up being like uh, not looking out for or openings in in it because of where it's placed uh, anyways we're not talking about that today we're talking simply about um, autopilot and also what I call switching gears you know there's very mindful play very strategic you slow things down and you're playing on a very like uh, win the options because you're really you're playing to strategy but also you're playing in a way where you're really trying to read your opponent and using a lot of focus for that but sometimes it might be a little tough so you need to play in a way that kind of holds them off for a bit or slows the game down right some people some players play better on this uh on this level but it shouldn't be an excuse it should not be an excuse to not uh train on some very fast react stuff um i do think it's part of the fixed mindset trap if you tell yourself that you're not able to do those fast stuff if you're like i'm just not a fast player uh no fast play is something that is developed it's not something that you just inherently have i, I really believe that i'm not in theory i don't have the fastest reflexes um i do not and yet some opponents feel like i play as if like i'm really really fast and it's not really that i'm just good at queuing and sequencing uh, certain attacks and options and I kind of have uh, we can use intuition or experience but I am basically applying my experience into have into making some guesses a little ahead of time and then kind of layering the options to that and Virtua Fighter is a game that lets you sequence 
not directly, but sequence your next move. And so like when you're stuck in recovery, in Virtua Fighter, you don't have to always wait for the recovery. You have to maybe wait just a tiny bit, but even before your characters recover, you input your next move and it'll do it. We've talked about this before. It is one of the most important things to understand about Virtua Fighter. Virtua Fighter lets you, generally lets you sequence your next move. And that's all I'm doing. And then it makes me look like I'm like the fastest reflex guy on earth. It's not. It's VF letting me just cue my next move, uh, even while I'm stuck in recovery. And so, I'm for me, it's it's that I'm picking certain options, and I have plays, and I also know how to condition people in certain most people in certain ways. And so, a lot of people have to deal with that, and I don't have to think too heavily on those patterns, but I do have to start becoming very mindful and turn off the quote-unquote autopilot when people break it. And so that's a lot of times what I am doing. It's like, okay, that's why it looks so effortless sometimes when I do it, is, okay, I'm doing this, this, okay, then, uh, oh, they actually stopped it. Is it a problem? Yeah, then, okay, then I need to slow it down a little. Is it, is it just something that they happen to get? Maybe, so let's keep, let's keep doing this. Um, instead of thinking of it as me turning on and off autopilot, though you could think of it that way, it's really me changing gears. It's, I was on this gear, the road got bumpy, so now I'm changing the gear to adjust for the bumpy road. And now I've got to be mindful of the road a little more than I was. That's pretty much how it works. Uh, when I'm allowed to, when I'm allowed to go on a gear where I don't have to mind the bumpy road, where I can just cruise, and I get to cruise through my options and they're working, that means that my cognitive load, my focus, is not being so drained. It's being, it's, and so that frees it up to keep, to maintain the advantage I have and to playing at a very high reaction level game. It's a different layer of consciousness because it's just more about, okay, like just handle these things with a uh, reaction instead. And then once, once something unexpected, once bumpiness gets hits onto the road, okay, we're changing gears so that I don't go flying off the bike, you know? Um, and so that's really uh, what I think of as how you're doing focus management or autopilot management or balancing between autopilot and mindful play um, or, you know, and that, that's basically what's going on there. And that's, uh, and to get there, you have to practice a lot. You have to have a lot of match experience. And that's also why a lot of the strong VF players, a lot of the veterans, we always, I've said this before, but we always end up saying, oh, that player is really good, but they're going to, they're going to have to lose a lot before they get, before they start beating me. Right. And that doesn't mean like, like what it means is, is they have to go through a lot of experience and they have to kind of sort of like build that, like build sort of the, um, the practical play into their game to where it's like almost automatic or can be summoned really quickly, but they know where the mix-ups are happening. And to see the mix-up happening, there, there's a few steps on the way. Um, I've Players know that I advocate what I call PEAT. PEAT is P-E-T-E. -E. It's punches, which is high jab and low jab. Really core important. High poke and low poke and virtual fire are the fastest attacks usually. Elbow, the fastest safe mid. So punches, elbow, throw, that's T, throw. And then E is a tricky one. Sometimes we could say escapes. It's better to think of it as defense. So punches, elbows, throws, defense. And that's basically boxing. And in Virtua Fighter, one of the first things you you really should get good at really quickly is how to apply boxing principles into your Virtua Fighter game. How to play Virtua Fighter boxing. It's um, the jabs, the punches are so important because they set up mix-up situations because they, they're they the quickest. So they stop people that are doing random neutral. They In this game, they are like as effective as the crouching mid kick in Street Fighter or, you know, um, and in Tekken, you might do like a 1-1 one, one, or like left, like, yeah. Um, and then in, uh, but in Virtua Fighter, you're doing punch and then your guard canceling the punch. And that means, so, so, the, so you don't actually get PP, you can do punch guard, and then you can do another punch guard. So punch and then guard cancel. What that does is it tells the input buffer, hey, I'm not doing the string. And if you do that, then your jab gets the most frame advantage from 
uh, it doesn't magically get the frame advantage, it's just that you get to use the frame advantage without the buffer getting confused if you're doing a string or not. So when we do high jab, it's just punch and then guard, then we tap guard to cancel it. And because of that, when we hit normally with it, we're plus five. And when we counter hit with it, we get a red spark. When we get the red light, uh, that means that we're at plus eight. It means Nitaku. And that means we get to mix up a throw or a mid and the opponent can defend one or the other and it's really hard to defend both without just doing guard throw escape and guessing the throw correctly. Um, but it's a really good mix up. It's the most important mix up situation in the game. And that's why jab's really important. But also, whenever jab connects, we got elbow. So we're doing jab elbow. That's the one two of Richter Fighter. And the elbow is also just really powerful because it can't really be crushed. It can be parried. It can be evaded with very little reward. It can be blocked with no reward, especially when you consider that fuzzy guard half. You can fuzzy guard if your elbow is blocked. Um, and these are the basic pokes. And you have to get, and then throw. Because anytime you read that the opponent wants to defend, throw is your way to punish defense. So jabs, high jab, low jab, elbow, throw, and then defense, learning how to do fuzzy, learning how to guard generally. Guard throw escape is the most basic in Bridge Fire. Everybody needs to do that. And then guard throws, so guard throw escape. And then you can do evade throw escape into a guard. And then after that, you can do fuzzy guard. And those are the super, and then you have evade cancel, which you can think of as evade and then fuzzy guard. Those are like the most core basic defense and it's also movement. And so punches, elbows, throw, movement, right? And that game takes a long time to learn how to make it into an autopilot. But you got but basically you need to keep applying it. And that's why it's one of the first things I teach in Virtua Fighter. Um, but for those of you who are not as experienced in Virtua Fighter, um, what I, I can give you the easy mode ways to apply these first to start to get a feel for it. Um, your high jab again it's powerful and neutral because it's just the fastest attack even though it's a high attack so it's going to lose to a low punch but it's going to beat almost every high and mid attack that your opponent's going to do and at like elbow range a lot of people still like to do highs and mids lows are just lows are not as likely in virtual fighter because most lows in the game are low reward like most lows can chip an opponent but then they put them at a disadvantage so most of the time when your opponent does something like a low kick that doesn't knock you down like you're able to just attack right away because you're at advantage and so yeah they chipped you but you might actually get a bigger reward especially if you learn how to do like a high jab counter hit into a throw or mid like launcher uh, the way that you do launchers in virtual fighter it's not really that you're waiting to guard something good or even to whiff punish that's higher level stuff in virtual fighter and you tech you tekken players will get rewarded on that later but you got to get better at the core boxing so how do you launch people in virtual fighter you launch them simply by like jab interrupting them and then after that you force them into a mix-up game where you're going to either throw or do your launcher. Uh, against uh, beginners you should do the launcher because they're likely to attack into the launcher. Against players that are blocking you now you switch to throw and by doing throw that makes them feel very insecure about blocking you after you jab them. So you jab them and then you throw. That's what you do against people that actually block. And then they start, they're going to start finally giving up and trying to attack you, right? Because attack beats throw in Virtua Fighter. Once you start seeing them go, like, trying to attack you when you go for the throw, now you do the launcher. That's how you do launchers in Virtua Fighter. It's, it's, you know, it's different from Tekken, right? Tekken, you launch mistakes. Tekken, you launch people because you block something big, but you really launch people because they um, because they made a mistake and they whiffed, especially. But at least as far as I can tell. But in Virtua Fighter, you do it because uh, they decide to attack because they they got sick of getting thrown, um, or at the beginner level because they are attacking just by default because they're mashing. So if they're mashing, yeah, jab into launcher. That's how you launch. So easy. It's much easier than block and punish. Much easier than whiff and punish. Make them whiff and punish. It's way easier than that. It's that simple on the beginner level. But then once you start finding people that block, it's conditioning them 
by throwing them and then they finally give up on trying to throw escape you because your throw guesses might be better than theirs like you're picking throws better and you're consistently throwing them then they finally give up and they're like ah oh, i'm gonna attack and then now that they hit attack you're like launch right that is how you launch in retro fighter um that's an extra lesson for the players that are more beginners or learning virtual fighter or, or are confused by how virtual fighter works it's an offense-based uh, way of launching um, you want to punish them for attacking when they're at a disadvantage and if they're not already doing that you want to encourage them by punishing their defense with throws um, okay so that's part of it. The other thing for you, for people learning virtual fighter, I'm going to talk another punch elbow throw basic is low punch. Why is low punch so good? Low punch so good. Well, low punch beats high punch. That's one really good thing already. And I told you how good high punch is. Uh, what else is low punch really good for? Um, okay. When a lot of Tekken players ask me about like or when they comment when I, I go how can I help you and they're like well I need to learn all my opponent's strings okay in Tekken you probably did need to learn everyone's strings to, to be able to deal with them um, in Virtua Fighter the mix-up is not really mid-low in most of the time like 80% of the time mid-low is actually not that good of a mix-up in Virtua Fighter even though it is a 3d fighter and even though that is a pure mix-up and there are good versions of that for every character but it's limited but most of the lows that are going to bother you at the lower level of play and at the faster level of play have almost no reward, as I mentioned before. They're going to put you at advantage if they hit you, and they did almost no damage to you. They're not, like, my Leon can combo you with the low, but most characters cannot really do that. Um, they might require a counter hit. They might be super slow attacks. Uh, so lows in Virtua Fighter are generally discouraged just on that alone, by their own design. Lows in Virtua Fighter are mediocre compared to what you might have in Tekken, is my guess, and probably way mediocre compared to what I've seen in Soul Calibur for lows. Uh, it doesn't mean they're terrible. It just means that they're narrower in application and their rewards are lower, so the game is just much more encouraging of a high and a mid. And it seems weird that a 3D fighter, especially the series that started 3D fighters, has that design philosophy, but it's because the mix-up of the game is actually mid-throw. About It's about assaulting the decision of your opponent to either attack you or defend you. That's what Virtua Fighter is about. Is my opponent going to attack me? Well, if I have a frame advantage, I'm going to attack. Um, if I'm at a disadvantage and my opponent's going to attack me, I'm going to defend, and then I'm probably going to defend, and then I'm going to deal with it. And if they try to launch me, the counter to a, la to a launcher is basically sidestep, and punish if I'm at a disadvantage. You can't do that from advantage in this game, so it's different from Tekken there. But what you can do is, if you know that, I already told you the logic of like jabbing somebody and then doing launcher, right? Well, your opponent can actually do that, reverse that logic on you. Like, they can punish your launcher if they're aware, if they're sharp enough to deal with the, being interrupted by a jab and then go, oh, I better evade now really hard it doesn't happen at it doesn't happen until like rank 35 that people do this but when they do it it's powerful so and if you do it at rank 25 it's really powerful it's basically if you see people doing jab into launcher oh that's your opportunity to uh, to get take to get hit by the jab especially counter hit and then evade the launcher and do like some kind of and if they did a launcher and you evaded it it's almost always really punishable and that's actually kind of bigger than the guard punish um, but it takes reaction, and it's a little harder to do than it sounds. Um, anyways, low punch is good because in Virtua Fighter, the strings all have predictable highs. A uh, high is almost always going to happen on the second or third attack. Almost guaranteed. And a lot of times, you're even locked blocking. Like, once you've blocked a part of the string, you're probably going to block whatever parts are... Are just gonna like there's gonna be you're gonna be locked into blocking until like they have a moment to actually mix up and so a lot of times you can just low punch like you can start blocking the string and then low punch and it'll come out like at the right time and it'll interrupt them and that's when you can force a mid throw guess because you've just stopped their offense low punch is good at stopping strings so good at stopping strings it's also good at in the neutral as well but a lot of time, but sometimes high jab is a little better, except that low jab beats high jab. 
So, um, it's really good at stopping high jab and it's really good at stopping strings. And that's why at the beginner level you feel like low punch, low punch, low punch is just so good. Uh, it's not, that is a bad habit, you get crushed. Uh, that's because a lot of things are designed to crush low punch, just like another reason why low attacks are not so good in this game is because an opponent can eventually just crush you for doing it. And that's, you know, kind of like Tekken almost, but um, but it's like they'll use a hop attack as opposed to a low parry. Um, but low jab is amazing at stopping strings. You don't even have to learn your opponent's strings. You're just like, I think a low punch is going to work here, and it works. Uh, low punch kills like 85% of all strings. But later on, you learn skills like delay string, which is insanely powerful, and how to use strings in this game. But you do that after you've mastered punch, elbows, throws, and defense. You know, And I just, I already told you how to use throws. So then elbows. Um, I've said it many times in this video already, but elbows are your safe mids. What, what's special about a safe mid? It can't be crushed. Somebody likes to, if somebody's trying to crush your low punch, your elbow's going to hit them out of the air and you probably get a combo. If somebody is doing low punch a lot, uh, you can block a low punch and just do an elbow and that always works. In fact, a lot of times Japanese players, if they're low punch mashing you, they're testing to see if you actually are able to do that. Because if you're not able to do that, there's a few other options they like to do. They might actually start doing launchers uh, after like after basic things like like you block their low punch, but they're still going to do the launcher because you're too slow. And because you're slow, uh, they feel like that their, their counter hit launcher is probably likely to hit you. But once they see that you can like elbow back after blocking a low punch, uh, and it seems hard to do at first, uh, the, the tip for that is just understand again, Virtua Fighter lets you cue your next move. You should be inputting the elbow the moment that low punch like runs into your block, that moment is when you actually input the elbow. You're not waiting to recover and push the elbow. You're doing it the moment that you see that like you've blocked the low punch, you input the elbow 6P, and then as soon as your character recovers, just like magic, it will automatic, your character will automatically do the elbow. And if the opponent mashed low punch, they're gonna get hit by that elbow. And almost nothing the opponent does, aside from a sabaki attack or a reversal um, or a parry, is gonna mess with your elbow. The only things that can mess with your elbow or make you regret doing the elbow are those things. The sabaki attack, the count, the, the paris. Yeah, the, those are really the only things that make you feel bad for doing an elbow. And that's why you should do the elbow most of the time until those things actually happen. Um, in this game, you need to... The mindfulness that you do have to have and the mindfulness that's actually in my reaction play already is is seeing that the opponent has proven that they get past the skill checks like the opponent uh the opponent has to prove to me that they can stop my default plan and then i and then i can change my action and that requires almost no thinking that requires almost like it doesn't require much it just goes like oh they beat it okay <laughs> you know um or you know oh they know what to do here good okay now i know what to do it doesn't take much thought for that, right? It, it takes way more thought going, what do I do? How do I, what if he does this? What if he does that? But instead, I have, I've learned very efficient, effective play in, and I've, I've trained myself to be so good at it that like in my kind of autopilot, there is a built-in, um, all right, let's see if they can beat it. They can't beat it? All right, I'm gonna be pressing them. And part of me pressing it is me wanting you to get enough experience to, to eventually beat it and then eventually have the reflexes to do it. Like, I, I am trying to help you. So it might feel like I'm just beating on you with basic stuff. No, it's it's really, it's also helping you learn. It's being your sparring partner. It's being your focus mid training partner. Um, it's not an insult to your play, but it's also like, you, you know, it's like, I know that you need to get better at this. I know you need to deal with it, right? Um, and it does. Ev it evolves in so many directions from there, and it's so much fun when you get when you each time you advance and make a different milestone. Virtua Fighter has a ton of milestones. I'm only talking about the most early ones, but they. But for a lot of players, it takes. Some players can do it in a week. 
super rare. I've seen that. Some players take a month, some take two, some take three. Some players take a year. Uh, but it kind of depends. But I'm, I'm fast-tracking you. I'm giving you the info. I'm explaining it to you. Because I think by doing this, you're going to get it way faster. And, and I think you're going to appreciate it. And I think you're going to love Virtual Fighter even more. Like if you can, if if you've not already crossed this barrier, but now I'm explaining this barrier to you, um, and you do start to make strides towards it, you start to improve, and you can see the improvement. I think you're gonna love that. And then when you actually, when you cross the threshold, and you start to see what more Virtual Fighter has, I think you're gonna really, really love it. I've seen it in so many players where this is when they fall in love with Virtua Fighters, when they realize that that first mountain was the first mountain. It was, there's, there's a whole mountain range they gotta go through. But it's fascinating. It's what makes the game so interesting. Um, I'm not saying it's better than other fighters, but I am saying it's so cool when you experience this. And it's so cool when you keep breaking more milestones. So, I hope this talk about so-called autoplay, but really focus management and changing gears, and then the training that goes into that, and I only talked about the early steps like punch, elbow, throw, and defense, um, and I've given a lot of context and explanation for the situations there, and I've given advice for beginners about where they should be starting, because that's really where you should start your virtual fighters, learning how to use the high jab, the low jab, the elbow, the throw, and the defense. Um, and I and if you have questions, you can send them to me. I will tell you exactly what I think you might want to work on if, based on what you tell me. Um, and yet, that's just the first hill. That's the first mountain, and it just grows from there. You know, I gave a hint into Nitaku, which is a forced mix up 50-50 between throw and mid, the core mix up of Virtua Fighter. Core mix up of Virtua Fighter. Uh, I, I'll give you another hint. Once you master punch, elbow, throw, and defense, you fight an opponent and you realize they're getting into it, right? Well, the thing is, when we get into that, when we get into that slug, into that, like, careful boxing, um, and we really get into it, then and you start to feel the pace you start to feel that the opponent is really engaged in it, and then another mix-up happens. What's that mix-up? Well, one example is punch, elbow, throw, defense actually um, can have trouble dealing with backdash. Backdash becomes powerful when the opponent's good at that. If the opponent is mashing attacks, slow attacks, strings, backdashing is so terrible in Virtua Fighter. Once you get an opponent sucked into this punch, elbow, throw game and defense, backdash becomes really strong, but it can also be countered and it can be neutralized too. And defense is actually the way to neutralize it. Like using a like in, when you have advantage, instead of doing a straightforward jab or an elbow or a throw, instead you're like, you know what? I'm just gonna crouch dash forward and react and see what he does. And then you see me backdash, and then you could from your crouch dash. You could go in more and hit me really hard, or you could uh, throw me, or you could just stay in defense and then try to react to what I do after that because I'm probably trying to do a backdash into attack, right? Um, and then there's a game after that. Um, another approach is like my backdash, you might just sidekick me out of it. It's one of the most powerful things. Like if I do a backdash with the intent to attack after the backdash, which means I'm probably not evade canceling it. If I do that backdash with the hope of like hitting you because you did a punch and whiffed or an elbow and whiffed, so I'm hoping to whiff punish you with my backdash. If I'm doing that, and if you did a sidekick in that moment, I will fall on my butt and you'll be able to launch me and do like half, almost half my life with most characters. That's how scary, that's how risky backdash is. So, do I have options against it? I do. I can evade punish it. <laughs> I can evade punish your sidekick. It's a slow move. Um, but I have to read it. I have to guess it. And again, I'm just giving you hints about what's hap what's to come. And Virtua Fighter has lots and lots and lots of these. I talked about that Nitaku. Nitaku starts as a mid-throw mix-up. It changes into many different things based on what the opponent likes to do, based on which defense options they like to do or offense options they like to do when they're in Nitaku. And it's a very, very deep mix-up game that, that just it branches out. But 
it starts with the core basic because the core basic will win almost most of the almost all the time. But then you can get a little greedy and a little more specific to what your opponent's doing, and maybe punish their two favorite options with one stone. Virtual Fighter has a lot of this, uh, but being able to master different techniques, and you're going to pick up tons and tons of techniques in this game, but just mastering some and then adding that and then you start to feel the satisfaction in that then you pick up more and then eventually again you have a comprehensive suite of attacks that allows you to play in a way that is really powerful but then also you're playing in high gear because there's not many bumps in the roads and then finally you hit a bump in the road your opponent throws something that changes everything and you're like okay I better respect this so you switch gears and now you're in mindful play and now you're trying to bait what it is that he's doing or you're trying to recreate the situation and then say you know what i'm going to do the same thing but that one thing he did to punish me i'm going to i'm going to beat that um or i'm just going to test it out and see what exactly is going on or i'm going to switch the game all of those are valid options that's what makes this game so good you have mix-ups in the moment you have mix-up tactics you have mix-up strategy. And the mix-up strategy is really cool, too. Uh, for a game that's almost always playing very close up, it's pretty amazing at how much things go full circle in different paths. You're going through the Venn diagrams of the game in a cycle. And you're kind of like... And it's... I think I've explained enough of it to get you interested, but I hope. Uh, but if you have any other questions about it, let me know. And... Um, it's been, I don't know, I've, I've ended up talking about a lot of things all at once, you know, so speaking of which, uh, I really enjoyed the movie Everything, Everywhere, All at Once, highly recommend it, no spoilers in the comments, please, I will delete spoilers in the comments, uh, but I enjoyed that, and to me, Virtua Fighter is my Everything, Everywhere, All at Once. Alright man, you guys have a good one, I hope we can spar, I hope we can train together, and if you have any questions for me, let me know, if you have any pointers for me, let me know, um, like, subscribe, whatever, um, but I just hope we get to play a lot more VF soon, uh, you and I, thank you very much, cheers.